Warm-hearted viewers, this is Start Anew on his coming broadcasting network. The term Start Anew is an acronym which stands for Sunlight, Temperance, Air, Rest, Trust in God, Alternative Medicine, Nutrition, Exercise, and Water. Today, we are honored to feature Dr. Samuel Deason on our program. Good afternoon and happy Sabbath. Uh, we will be talking about cleansing and detoxification. Uh, in a uh, conventional medical uh, system, we are not taught much on cleansing, detox. When they tell us about detoxification, it's usually those who are doing drug rehabilitation. Or maybe some of them will just have some types of poisoning. But in natural healing, when you ask a natural healer, oh, why did he end up with this problem? They were saying toxins. And uh, for a while, there was controversy between the medical field and the natural healers. Because on, on the teaching in, in medicine is anyway, you have your organs of excretion supposed to be supposed to be doing its work. So, but uh, now we are getting uh, re lectures on free radical agents, on toxics, uh, toxic chemicals that we are being exposed to, on electro pollution on radiation around us, and this seems to be damaging ourselves. So now, uh, in our medical books, uh, Medi Internal Medicine by Harrison, now they have an entire chapter about free radical agents. Before, it was not really that, uh, uh, that important, that uh, it, it was even taught much to us in med school. Uh, if you go to a natural healer, and you have heart disease, diabetes, cancer, arthritis, and these different diseases, they will always tell you, oh, we have to do cleansing. You need to do cleansing diet. You need to do cleansing herbs. You need to do this, 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 this. Now, in, uh, if you remember our old folks, they used to do enema no? with soap suds. You know, so it's, it's uh, water with a little bit of soap, and they would do enema. And that was the thing that they kept doing in a long time, including our herbs and maybe soap or steam bath. These are old style of treatments which are now making a comeback. And in fact, the uh, findings in the United States is natural healing is uh, people who consult uh, alternative medicine, they started in, in the 1980s only about 20-30%. Uh, but as time passed, they got more and more and more. According to Music Magazine, just before the turn of the 2000 year, uh, 2000, uh, year 2000, uh, they were asked, the financial analysts at Wall Street were asked, what will be the next trend? And the financial analysts, including the uh, uh, president's, uh, presidential analysts, were saying the wellness and nutraceutical industry will be the trillion dollar business of the new millennium. And they were saying this is going to boom because conventional medicine is not given the promise that it's supposed to give. And so they, when they look at it, they say we have to go into this kind of uh, business the uh, Wall Street uh, financial figures. They said, we have to change, we have to go do this. So now we're getting medical tourism. People are going to Thailand to do water, uh, fasting. You know? uh, they spend dollars to fast. They go to uh, do massage. They go to do uh, mud packs and herbs and acupuncture and all these kind of things. People from uh, the US will cross the border of Tijuana and go to uh, Mexico. And, they go there, we stay for two, three weeks, and they pay a thousand dollars per day for a three week, four, uh, three to four week program. And insurance doesn't pay for it; it comes from their own pocket. So there is a reason why these people are going there. It's because they are not getting the results they're supposed to get from the conventional medical approach. So what's happening now is this trend has been going on the past ten to twenty years. But a hundred years ago, this was already shown to us. Ellen White was saying we should set up treatment centers in the city where massage, uh, hydrotherapy, herbs, diet, and lectures on health would be given. Now, massage is not a normal treatment that is included in conventional medicine. What she, is, she was saying is 
He said, set up wellness uh, uh, sanitariums, quote unquote, outside the city where there's trees, gardens, and patients come there and they are taught helpful living, they are treated, they are prayed over, and the patient comes home red skinned. Uh, I mean, they, they, they look cheerful, they're happy, and they're healthy. What, is she, what she is saying is wellness centers, lifestyle centers, spa, so to speak. So Mrs. White already saw the trend. You know what the word spa means? Solus per aqua, heating through water. But now diet and lectures on health would be given. Now massage is not a normal treatment that is included in conventional medicine. What she, is, she was saying is, she said, set up wellness uh, uh, sanitariums, quote unquote, outside the city where there's trees, gardens, and patients come there and they are taught Helpful living, they are treated, they are prayed over, and the patient comes home red skinned. Uh, I mean, they, they, they look cheerful, they're happy, and they're healthy. What, is she, what she is saying is wellness centers, lifestyle centers, spa, so to speak. So, Mrs. White already saw the trend. You know what the word spa means? Solus per aqua, heating through water. But now we've got all these big centers being. Uh, being set up, and we should be in the forefront of this kind of thing. You know? We definitely had the knowledge about it. So, so what? Why? Why detoxification? How is it done? What? What? What is it? Okay. So the body normally have eliminative organs, parts of us that eliminates toxins, and it is important for the body to do this elimination. That's why when we have patients with doing dialysis. When the kidneys are unable to eliminate the toxins, they have to have a machine to do that work. The process where in the body's ability to eliminate or excrete toxins, and then you, you try to help the body eliminate it, is called detoxification or cleansing. Now, as I said before in some of our lectures, our body is capable of self-healing. You, know? you give the body what it needs, nutrition, ex uh, uh, oxygen, water, and then you allow it to eliminate toxins, and then you have a wonderful environment, then your system is going to do its job. Mainly survival, repair, replication, duplication, and healing. So if you, however, to your normal uh, lifestyle, start building up toxins like cholesterol, uric acid, uh, maybe you're a heavy smoker, heavy drinker, this takes its toll. No? When you're young, no problem. You can do things. But as time passes, as you age, your system gets weaker and then something will break. Okay? When you do have the sense of symptoms of disease, your body is trying to tell you something. So let's say your blood pressure goes up. If you tell a, a conventional doctor, oh, my blood pressure is up, they give you medications for your cholesterol and your for blood pressure, maybe a blood thinner, and if already your heart is affected, they give something to, to uh, help the heart and for emergency. But if you were to ask, an alternative doctor will say, okay, how come your blood pressure is high? Oh, you know, my diet is high in cholesterol. Well, we treat the diet. That's the cause. We also treat the blood pressure. We also treat the cholesterol. But we detoxify. And it's such a simple thing. Just change the diet. And within a couple of months, you'll be off your medications. Instead of taking the medications forever and maintaining it, why don't you just maintain a healthy diet? When I was working with the Kalawa City Health Department, we work in Caloma City, Bagong Barrio area. The place always floods, yeah, lots of squatter. They couldn't even afford a three, three meal a day, you know, three times a meal, uh, three meals a day. And then, if they have heart disease or diabetes, I have to prescribe medication for them because I was working with, working with the Caloma City Health Department. But they couldn't even afford to eat three times a day. Then you give them a medication that they have to take for the rest of their lives. And the book says you have to give them a blood thinner, something to lower cholesterol and so on. He's gonna buy food, he's gonna buy medicine. Guess what he, he chooses? Food. So why not just use his food to treat them? He'll buy anyway. So it, it's, it's a question of how do you make a person get well, spend time, talk to him, show him where he got his problems in the first place, give him a choice. So when you have the signs and symptoms of disease, your body is trying to warn you. Listen to your body. Don't just suppress the symptoms. Okay, so what are free radical agents? These are chemicals that normally is produced by the body. 
And these are toxic to the body, but they, they are the normal byproducts of metabolism. They can also be produced by damages uh, caused by in the environment. So what are the main causes of free radical agent? Well, you need a production of energy. Every cell in the body produces energy, you know? And so you produce this kind of free radicals. These are chemicals or molecules that have an extra oxygen. And this oxygen will damage uh, other cells. And they in turn, because there's damage, will produce other free radical agents. Another cause would be when you lack oxygen or, or there's a blockade in the blood vessel. So then, Again, there's damage to the cell because the blood is not flowing there, oxygen is not getting there, then you start producing free radical agents. Another cause would be the damage caused by radiations, ultraviolet lights, different types. Uh, even a cell phone, when you're exposed to it, your body will produce too, many, too much uh, free radical agents. An example would be if you were to take an apple and then you cut it, and the free radicals in the air, the oxid uh, extra oxygen will damage the apple, so you will see it turning brown. Now, Nature provided anti-free radical agents. We call them antioxidants. So if you were to cut the apple and you get lemon or calamansi and you squeeze it on that apple, it's not going to turn brown. The antioxidants in the calamansi or lemon prevents the injury that the uh, free radical agents will do. So that, that, that's the work of the free radicals, uh, the uh, antioxidants they take, vitamin C, vitamin E, selenium, and so many other types of uh, antioxidants. So how do they uh, work? Well, when our cell, our body is made up of uh, 60 to 100 million cells. So we are trillionaires. Huh? And these cells interact with each other. Several collections of cells will form what we call a tissue. Huh? And a group of cells will form a tissue. Several tissues together will form an organ. Huh? And several organs will form a system, right? And several systems will then form the human body. So, anything that damages the cell will damage the tissues, will damage the organs, and damage the system that damage the human body. So it's like a domino effect. Huh? So the things we take into our body or we expose to, it will have an effect. Uh, we call it cascade mechanism. It's like a domino effect. You know, if you have seen a domino being placed like this, you push one side and you can see it falling, falling, falling. So that's the same thing. Now, in medicine, they treat patients by organs, right? Or by a system, like example. Let's say I have a, a problem with my heart. Usually, you go to a cardiologist or internist, and they, he gives you a medication for your heart, which incidentally, for a long time, will damage your kidney. Once you get the kidneys are damaged, then you have to be referred to a nephrologist. The nephrologist will give you medicine, which probably will affect your liver in the long run. Then you are then referred to a gastroenterologist. The gastroenterologist now will give you medicine and some of them may damage your nerves, so you are referred to a neurologist. So you have about three, four, five doctors. And if you are in very severe state, you end up in the ICU and you have four or five doctors there. Each one charging ICU rates. And each one giving you medicine that, you know, Anyway, if this medicine damages kidney, my nephrologist friend is going to take care of that, and so on and so forth. And yet, when during the testing time, they were not really doing that on the rat or the mice or the human beings, they were experimenting with the drugs. It's only in active practice they start giving it to a patient because this medicine is so and so. Can you imagine what happens inside the human body? Okay, now in alternative medicine, what we do is we treat the whole system. We give something that will help the liver, the kidneys, and so on, change the cells. We treat patients cellularly. 90% uh, of disease starts at the gastrointestinal system. The, uh, the cause is either food that we take or we are unable to eliminate it properly. So the, less, the rest is 5%. Usually we inhale it through the pulmonary system. Now, uh, as uh, uh, researched by uh, Dr. Uh, Thomas Weiss, he says, all diseases are caused by chemicals. All the chemicals the body needs, we can get through food, or also oxygen water, except for oxygen water. If we only knew enough, all diseases can be treated and prevented through proper nutrition. Nutrition is very important because 
uh, if you only have enough money to buy food and then you have to buy medicine, you lose out. Right? So the uh, concept of using food as a way to treat has been around since the 1930s, actually since the time of Hippocrates. He said, let your food be your medicine and your medicine your food. So uh, one of the things we do is that we use nutrition as the main event because that's the one that will build up your house, will build up your system. Now, Ministry of Healing, page 134, said every person should have a knowledge of nature's agency and how to apply them. It's essential to understand the principle, that's the theory, and have the practical training, and that's the application, that enable one rightly to use this knowledge. If you have a car, you should at least know how to maintain your car, right? Otherwise, your mechanic is going to fool you. I've been fooled by a mechanic before, you know? And he told someone, and that someone told me, oh, you know, I just changed this uh, setting, and he started well, and they, the guy thought, you know, I fixed it. But I'm not saying the doctors are that bad, no? I'm just saying that since we all have our body, we should at least know how to take care of it. But not only that, as Seventh-day Adventist Christians, we should not only know how to take care of the body, we should know how to heal. Why? Well, the Great Commission says, Go you into all the world, preach the gospel, and treat. Treat the sick, no? Heal the sick, teach, and preach. But remember, he didn't say, that we be, Go be a doctor. Go be a nurse. He was telling this to laymen. Now, a layman cannot prescribe medications, but he can do natural healing. So, that natural healing is the only way that a layman, an ordinary person, and he says every person, can treat and heal or prevent disease. And it doesn't require a degree. It doesn't require a hospital. It doesn't require so much money to, to do that. Anyway, we should know the principle and we should know the practical application. Our old grandparents, our, the health moralists also, they know how to treat patients. They use the steam bath, they use the uh, mud packs, you know? They use the enema, but you ask them, why did they get sick? Oh, you step on the dwarf, no? You were bewitched. Oh, a bad spirit or a fairy, you know? So they know the practical application. And very saddening if a Seventh-day Adventist goes to this faith healer. You should not, no? The Bible is very clear about that. But then on the other side, we have the healing wonders of herbs, healing wonders of water. We have the, the knowledge supposedly, but are we using it? We're not, no? They are our best sellers in the corporate world. Yeah, we're not using them. So every person, so that means old or young, high income, low income, Adventist, non-Adventist, should have a knowledge of how to keep ourselves healthy and how to treat disease, whether they are Adventist or not. Of course, okay. Now this one is something I should have flushed this morning, but look at this. Natural means used in accordance with God's will, to bring about supernatural results. When we ask for a miracle, the Lord will direct the mind to simple remedy. That's the selected messages, uh, chapter two, page three forty six. That is striking, no? You're asking for a miracle, Lord, please help me, heal me. But you're not doing your part. You must do your part. Anyway, I'm doing all these drugs, but what if they're damaging other parts of your body? Maybe you're not gonna get a miracle from that. From the spirit of prophecy, it says, Ask for a miracle and the Lord will direct your mind to simple remedy. One time, there was a patient who had a heart attack. His daughter didn't know what to do. Lord, do you have to know what to do? The guy fell in the uh, restroom, no? So she pulled her dad out and she didn't want to do. She called 911. He's still having uh, problems and she didn't know how to do CPR. Then she heard a voice. Go get cayenne pepper. Put it under his tongue. He, she got the cayenne pepper. Put a lot under his tongue. Patient woke up screaming. I mean, the patient <laughs> revived. <laughs> Somebody told her to do it. I remember one time uh, we had a medical, uh, well, we had a free medical clinic every Tuesday before in Baisa, and there were four doctors, and I end up on the second Tuesday of the month. They were on the other Tuesdays. And we had a patient with primary complex, two kids. They came to me, they've been taking uh, uh, INH and Rifampicin, these are two leading medications for primary complex. And they were taking it religiously for six months, they did an x-ray, still with primary complex. So 
took it again for another three months, very, uh, very, uh, basically nine months, did an x-ray, it was still, still there, so they came to us. And so I said, I don't do drugs, I, I do alternative. Oh, please, please help us. So the two, the brothers, I said, okay, you take INH, still with the medication, and then you take lung tonic, which is an African sea coconut. It's very good for the lungs, an herb. And the other one, just African sea coconut. Both of them were given vitamin C. After three months, Doc, when you do x-ray, I said, yes. Guess who came back without a problem in lungs? The African sea coconut and vitamin C. So, so she said, oh, then I can remove the INH? I said, yeah, remove. I told the story to a friend of mine. She's a nurse at a big, big uh, uh, government health center in, in some part of area. So she told her friend, and her friend has had a problem with her daughter. Every time she gives the INH rifampicin combination to her daughter, she would scream and, and do tantrums because when she urinates, it's red, orange. Short, so she thought it was blood. And so she, they had to spank in order to, <laughs> for her to drink. Every day, you know, every day for months and months. Finally, the night before, she heard her daughter say, Dear Jesus, Papa Jesus, Please give me medicine without blood. No? Please give me medicine. The following morning, the daughter said, Thank you, Jesus. This afternoon, my mom is going to bring me medicine without blood. That morning, that nurse talked to my friend. They called me up. I said, go buy it at the nearest herbal store. She went to the store, bought it, brought it home, and the daughter was not even surprised. Jesus told her, <laughs> her mom is going to come back with a what, non-bloody producing thing. That's fascinating, no? That's fascinating. If you ask God for a miracle, He will direct your mind. Uh, Charlie had a story before. <laughs> Told him, do I bring my dad to such this person to for a consultation? Do you bring him to somewhere else? He said, I want to see a sign. They didn't show him a sign. Okay. So, ask for a miracle. We believe in signs. Because King Hezekiah asked for a sign if he's going to get well, and God showed him a sign. When we are in that state where we don't know what to do, ask for a sign. But we have a line that we have received. You, know? you ask for a miracle, it's not in a bottle. God has a different way. Okay. So, cleansing diet. Actually, the cleansing diet lecture is quite long. We'll just pass through it breezily. You know? If the cause of disease are toxins, cholesterol, uric acid, and so on, how do you clean toxins up? Well, since antioxidant is one way, then get more antioxidants in. Go back to the Eden diet. So, Mrs. Watts says, three meals is good to its best. Three meals is good to its best. Why? Every time we eat, we burn energy. In studies that show if you eat more often, your lifespan gets shorter. Because our body has enzymes. These are used in every function of the body. Every time we eat, we burn up enzymes. Now, there are limited level of enzymes in the body. Just like when a woman has, uh, gets to become menopausal when she utilizes all her eggs. So, we need additional enzymes from a diet. Raw food gives that enzymes. If you cook food, the enzymes are damaged or destroyed. So, what you do is you incorporate raw food with your meal. Eat raw before cooked food. So that's basically the rule. And if you are the older you get, the more raw food you should bring in because it's an antioxidant uh, property. It reverses aging. It helps with boosting the immune system. But most of us eat what? Not just three times a day. The meriendas. Huh? So you are depleting your enzymes. And if you're diabetic, they tell you six frequent feedings. You're actually weakening your pancreas the more you do that. Right? And the one problem is a diabetic. Weaken pancreas. Weaken uh, production of insulin. Or if they have insulin, it's not working well. So you have to have time to give the pancreas rest. But then they feel hungry because it's not being utilized. No? If you check the, sugar, the level of the blood, the sugar is high. But they're hungry. So what, what's, the, what's the problem? It's like somebody with a scar unable to start and he thought that uh, the gas is the, the tank is empty but if we check the, the gas uh, the tank the, the tank is full but it's not reaching the carburetor no? so in diabetes type 2 your blood has to food sugar 
but you're being starved. So we call it starvation in the midst of plenty. Okay, so the cleansing diet program is that you eat only three times a day. And, you know, we have a saying before, eat like a king in the morning, huh? eat like a queen uh, or a prince at noontime, in late, and eat like a pauper or a poor man at night. The poor doesn't eat that often anyway. No? So if you eat that, that way, breakfast, lunch, and dinner very, very light, on even before 6 p.m., your sugar will start going down if you're diabetic. Your cholesterol will start going down if you have problems with cholesterol. And pretty soon, your blood pressure will also follow. No? And then your uric acid will also start going down. But you have to sleep early. Okay? Because at 10 p.m., our liver's job is mainly to clean the blood. If you're still awake at 10, 11, 12, it's not going to do a good job. Not only that, your hormones go up, no? So you become prone to cancer of the breast or cysts and ovary because your estrogen is unable to be processed by your liver. So we're getting a lot of people getting all these cysts, all these ovarian problems, thyroid problem. They may be eating uh, iodized, uh, rich, iodine-rich food, and yet they're getting thyroid problem. You find they're not sleeping well at night, no? They're having their telenovela or computers or Facebook or whatever. So, just the timing of the meal. So when you're saying cleansing diet, nutrition, what to eat, what, what to eat, what not to eat, when not to eat. You get that concept, no? We're always teaching on nutrition, you have to be vegetarian. One, one person told me, ah, oh, my dad has been a vegetarian for 10 years, he ended up with cancer. That new start is baloney. And you ask, what, what kind of vegetarian about? Is it puro veggie? <laughs> How often does he eat? Is he eating heavy dinner? No? So move early. We had a, there's a story about a, a lady who has high blood pressure, high cholesterol, high uric acid, very lovely but very, very chubby. No? And she didn't like her blood uh, test. So she comes to the doctor and says, oh, what should I do? So the doctor prescribes some medication and said, you have to do three meals a day. But then the, the problem is after a month, she comes back, she was very hungry, she was very thin and so on. And she so said, what happened to you? I followed your directions. Did you eat three meals a day? Oh, I thought you said three meals a day. <laughs> they didn't get it. Okay. <laughs> so, three meals a day. M-E-A-L-F. Okay? Not three meals a day. Okay. So, cleansing diet. How do you do a cleansing diet? What's the purpose of a cleansing diet? As I said before, the causes of almost all cancers and diseases are improper diet and improper lifestyle. So it should not be medication. Instead, it should be lifestyle modification. So we are familiar with the new STAR program. What we do is the STAR, I knew we added another A for alternatives. And you modulate that. No? So nutrition, what to eat? Well, we are taught what should be properly given. So it's a question of degree. So there are people who will always be carnivorous, no? If it's carnivorous, there's a formula there. You look at carnivorous animals, no? You'll find that their teeth are canines, di ba? Pangil. So, and then you look at herbivore or uh, vegetarian animals. Their teeth will be square. Okay. Then there's the omnivore, in which case they eat anything. Now, that's not going to be healthy. It only means you're matakaw, no? The herbivore, and the carnivore is the two division. Now, where does man, uh, where is man supposed to be? If you're gonna eat meat and you want to eat meat, look at how many canines you have compared to your square teeth. How many? One, two, three, four. How many teeth do we have? Thirty something, no? So that means maybe in a month's time you should only eat maybe four times. That will good fish, actually, you know, because it's not a vegetarian thing. So, dapat ganon. And our Lolo and Lola, our grandparents, used to do that. They only eat maybe more on fish and vegetable, and then maybe on fiesta, on Christmas, on, on uh, occasionally they, they eat meat. And these are normal meat. These are farm-raised creatures. Now, we have all these chemically created creatures, you know, they're drinking milk from a cow that never had a baby you know, or didn't have a baby. And they're eating eggs from chicken that never even probably touched a rooster or had a rooster toucher. 
So these are all chemically based. You know, in the U.S., by the age of eight or nine, children were having menstruation. The effect of hormones in kids, either for men or for boys or for, for kids, uh, girls, is very powerful. No? Did you notice? Dumadami uh, ang gay. No? Uh, they don't bear children, but they're getting more. No? So these are the effect of hormones in the food that we take. And unfortunately for the women, the kids, they end up with early puberty. That means you're exposed to estrogen earlier, so you are more prone to cancer of the breast over the uterus. And so one young girl was interviewed in Montel, that's uh, like a, an opera a TV show, and she was only 13 years old, fully formed, like a young, uh, like a woman of 20s, in her 20s. And she said, I have slept with 100 men. So imagine how early she started. Why? She is fully formed, she has the hormonal thing, and she has the urge, but doesn't have the mental and emotional control. So imagine what the enemy is doing. And these hormones are being get injected and placed in everything we eat. We're eating, even in the plant kingdom, they're starting to put it there. So, three meals a day, breakfast, lunch, dinner, heavy breakfast, moderate lunch, early dinner. If you have problems with weight, maybe just use, change the dinner. Make it more into fruits, soup, juice, or whatever. So cleansing diet's purpose is to, to shorten the time that you eat something and you eliminate it. See, if you ate something and it took you two days, three days to move it out, it ferments and rots and produce all sorts of chemicals there. So uh, if you're eating three times a day, you should move your bowel at least twice a day. Twice a day. So the, the medical field says once a day. No, I'm sorry, it's not once a day. If you're eating your breakfast and then your lunch and your dinner and our intestinal tract is about eight times your body height, no? so if you're five foot tall times eight, that's about 40 feet long intestines, uh, I mean uh, intestinal tract from the mouth to the rectal area, you need fibers to make walis, no? to sweep those fats and things out. If it stays there, it's a moist, dark, full of bacteria thing, uh, place. So what, did, what happens when you take food? and put it in a moist, dark, warm area. What happens? Napapanis, no? It, it, uh, it, it gets sour, no? So then you reabsorb that. Even in the large intestine, you still absorb fluid there. So if it's still there, you absorb it. And so you no wonder you get cranky, you feel bad, you, are, you, you, you hate people around you. When you go on a, on a clean diet program, you feel better. You look at the world through uh, a gentler way, you know? That's the effect of a healthier cleansing diet. So the cleansing diet intention is that when you eat food, it's processed and then eliminated faster. Then it speeds up absorption. It's the same thing. If you, it takes so long, the food is so mucoid, so sticky, you're not able to digest it and absorb it well, then it ferments. You know why they told us that food, fruits and vegetables should not be mixed when eating? You know why? Because fruits are easy to dissolve. You chew it in your mouth, it's already dissolved. It's already, uh, you can just swallow it and it's, it's okay, no? But vegetable takes a long, long time to digest. So let's say I eat fruit, I eat vegetables and I eat fruits as a dessert. Your digestive tract is still digesting your, your vegetable and then you eat the, the fruits, which is already liquid form. But you cannot absorb it because the vegetable is preventing it from being absorbed. It becomes fermented, it becomes acidic. So the rule is, eat your fruits first, and preferably give it some time between your vegetable and your, your fruits. Uh, one time, one of the pastors was asked about it, and he didn't know what to say. You know? So we should understand why we were giving counsels in, in our books, why we are being given counsel. And then concerns vital energy and enzymes. Now obviously, if your enzyme has to work hard to digest it, you're not going to be able to absorb it well. And the older we get, the weaker our digestive power becomes. So I think the older we get, the more raw food we should put in. But then it's hard to chew without your teeth, right? Eh? So you liquefy. For patients with cancer, for those who want to have rejuvenation, the secret of rejuvenation is raw food. Eh? Why? If I take a carrot and I plant it, it will grow. If I cook the carrot and plant it, it's not going to grow.
What is in the fresh and raw carrot that was not in the cooked one? Life. That's the word I'm looking for. Life. Life begets life. Life adds life. Living nutrients add life, not cook, no? Cook adds life. Sorry, it does not, no? If you put nutrition into your body that is alive, it's still full of enzymes, then you get more life, you know? It reverses aging. And then it cleans up blood and the system of impurities. It also helps you develop willpower. Because you know you need willpower in order to say no to the food you want to eat. So, when your body tells you, oh, I'm too toxic, then you do something to eliminate it. Okay, so what are the benefits of cleansing or detox? Well, improving the immune system. So, heart disease, diabetes, cancer, oh, cleansing, improve the immune system. Neutralize and eliminate free radicals in our body. Assist in destroying cancer cells while feeding healthy cells. Clearing of mucus, congestion, all the yucky things. Cleanses the blood, is of the blood, and the light is in the blood. If you clean the blood, then you have a better system going there. Then cleansing the palate of cravings for sugar, salt. For smokers, they have a hard time quitting smoking because the diet is still the same. Protein, caffeine, nicotine, they're all the same. They're all stimulants. So if you were to tell a patient, okay, you want to get off your smoking, go on a fruit diet for a while. It will help them markedly to stay away from smoking. But if you're still eating high meat, high fat, high holy diet, and still drinking your coffee, they're really going to be craving for a cigarette. Okay? So it also strengthens the will. We've had a patient before, he is 80 plus years old, never ever gone to church, never ever having prayed, 80 years old, huh? And he had liver cancer, stage 4, terminal. So he was brought to us by his sisters who were Adventists, and he grew up in an Adventist home. So his wife came, Catholic, and his kids, and basically uh, everybody is giving up on him. So we started him on cleansing. He told me after the first few days of cleansing that his mind was clearer. Now, we did a worship and we told him about what prayer is, what the Bible is, and so on. By the fourth day, fifth day, we asked him to pray. He prayed. Then he told me, and he told my wife, Wow, it's wonderful to read the Bible. Well, from a young age until he got to 80, people have been putting him, uh, making him do Bible study. And he couldn't understand a single word. He couldn't get it. He would just listen for, for courtesy's sake. No? Because his sisters were Adventists. Jehovah's Witness, English and Christ, all these different denominations have been given him Bible study. Didn't work. Now when he went cleansing the first week, he started reading his Bible, he could understand. He cleared his mind, removed the cobwebs, enabled him to understand what he's reading. Of course he was told he's going to die, so... <laughs> Eventually he's, he was baptized. But the point is, detox cleanses the mind and body. Why do you think the people of Israel would fast before they come before the Lord. It cleanses the impurities. And what do they do on themselves? They put ashes. And what are what is ashes or ash? Charcoal. So it has a spiritual application. You clean up through fasting and you you remove that. There's a text in the Bible, if we forget, uh, if we confess our sins. He is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Notice, first con uh, confess your sin, then he will forgive and he will cleanse us. But there's another text, and I forgot what it is. It says, he will cleanse us and heal all our illness. So, merong, uh, what do you call that? Protocol, no? Confession, oh Lord, I, I made a mistake. He, forgiveness, okay? That it probably includes forgiveness for yourself and for others. And then, what? Cleansing and then healing. The same thing goes in alternative medicine, naturally. Know what you did wrong, you know? stay away from it, of course, and then cleansing and then uh, healing. So cleansing, the blood is like the body and when it becomes dirty, we start dying. If a river that is stagnant, that is full of debris, is going to be a dead river. Huh? For a river to have life, it should be flowing merry. The, cir uh, the circulation of the body, is uh, manifested in how the blood is. So now we have six organs of elimination. Okay, you, you, you have a good diet, you have uh, three meals a day before six dinner, and you're, you're, uh, you have now removed all these toxins, or maybe 
uh, dislodge all these toxins. Now you're going to have reactions. We have patients have lots of pimples when she did or he did a dancing diet program. Some have bad breath. You know? We had a patient whose face started peeling off because of rashes. It was so scary, it, it fell on the carpet. You know? And we thought it was Steven Johnson's, that's a drug reaction. But when uh, the face, oh, well, when the face fell off, when the skin fell off, it was a lovelier skin. Lupus patient. You know? She was taking steroids, it started to work. One week, she couldn't even smile because it would, her lips would bleed. She would come wearing a veil you know, because her face looks like it's a zombie. You know. But after a week, skin was nice. So the body will try to clean up. And to prevent all those reactions, you have to make them come out faster. So we have six organs of cleansing, of elimination. So while you're cleaning the blood, things are going to be dislodged. You're going to have to speed up elimination. So the skin is one major organ. You can cleanse so many things through the sweat, so you make them eliminate uh, as fast as you can. But then if you eliminate too much, the, the salt will go down. For example, we will have patients with uh, doing dialysis, and we allow intake of water if we're going to make him sweat out. But then when he sweats out, the sodium goes down, so we allow intake of salt. So if your kidneys can eliminate things, then make the skin do the work. If the door is closed, open the window. So that's our approach with the answer. Definitely sweating is more less expensive than <laughs> the analysis, right? Okay, so we can eliminate toxins and also absorb certain things. The lungs, so deep breathing exercise. So that's how we do it. The liver, when you sleep early and your dinner is before 6 p.m., your liver can do a good job of cleansing. But if you eat a heavy meal in, at night or a, a dos, uh, you stay late at night, then your liver is unable to do a good job. See, the liver's job in the daytime is digestion. It still filters the blood, but at night it, it becomes more active from 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. It becomes more active in terms of cleaning the blood because your body is supposed to be asleep by then. Okay, and kidneys, the large intestine, so we give good bacteria, you know, the probiotic. There are patients whose cancer got healed just by taking probiotics, you know, you know yung, uh, good bacteria, okay. And then the limbs, so they do lymphatic massage, they exercise, and uh, uh, these six organs, most of them, when they do detox, their job is to clean the blood. Yes. Then there are other alternative modalities, and we'll just pass through uh, them. There's water therapy, hydrotherapy. Uh, these are some examples of treatment. You can use stones to stimulate nerve points. Right? You take some stones, heat it up, and put it on the pressure point. It relieves the swelling, the pain, then you can do massage with it. So we are actually making a, a lecture about it, where you can use stone. Is, are stones expensive? They're not. Or you can just use pressure point in certain areas. If there's some pain, you, you press, right? back. You, you, you have felt that? Those are pressure points. The Chinese call them acupuncture points. I don't care how you call them, but they're there. You can press. <laughs> you can use needles. You don't want needles, you use your fingers. You have pressure points on your fingers. Huh? You don't want to use uh, 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 other things, or you can bite it if you want. Or you, you know the clothes pin, huh? put clothes pin there. That's how you maintain health. Or you can just use the, the comb, no? Uh, it's my comb. And you can go like this on the comb, no? Like this. And you're doing the pressure points on those uh, reflex points. So some people, they don't like the, re the idea of reflex points or reflexology. They are there. Sciences have proven them. Just because New Agers in Tibetan, in Hindu, in Indians discovered them, doesn't mean they're bad. They're there. They also worship the sun. Does that mean we don't go out because they're worshiping the sun? So we have to be aware that these things are there. Uh, we don't need to be so fanatical about certain things. Okay. So what are the purpose of these treatments for healing and beauty, for relaxations, and for longevity, and of course for to help to reverse health uh, disease. So this is an example of a detox technique, body wraps. Now if you go to beauty salons, spa, wellness centers, they have this big plastic uh, thing, and they lay you down there and they apply it. So they can apply uh, charcoal, or well not charcoal, they apply clay, uh, specifically from the uh, Scottish area, they call it moor, 
which are swamp areas and they have this tree that ended up beneath the water. So they have all this yucky, yucky mud. And they're very expensive because they came from imported, no? <laughs> came from, <laughs> from Scotland. Then you apply it and it's very healing, no? The skin really is really nice, no? And some of them will use seaweed wrap, okay? Uh, sushi, or... Oh. <laughs> so they will get that, the seaweed, and they'll apply it. So it, it, it depends on what you're aiming for, okay? So the body wrap is a very simple detoxification therapy. And you can use it. You can use yogurt. Huh? You can use avocado. You can mix it with a little bit of papaya because you want to be a little bit fairer. No? Then you, you make a, a, a paste. Then you apply it on the person that wants to do therapy, then you wrap. Is it expensive? In the salons, it would be expensive. But all you need to know is the principle. Right? Principle. Okay. If you just wrap it, what's the big deal, no? So of course when you wrap it, then you feel hot, you start sweating, you absorb some of the sticks and you eliminate toxins. So they use it at Marie France and these different places where they want you to lose weight and they wrap you with, uh, sometimes they need a plastic wrap, no? So they wrap it all over and then they even add heat so that you will really sweat out. What are the benefits? Well, you can actually have weight loss. You burn cholesterol, you burn fluid out. It detox, and we've used it for serious diseases like kidney and liver disease, liver cirrhosis. If the liver is not functioning, you can make the skin do the work to eliminate toxins. We had a patient, he was a liver cirrhosis case. Heavy drinker, smoker, a drug addict, and he came to us, big, big tummy, very, very thin, and they've already removed the fluid twice or three times at uh, the big government hospital. But he doesn't have any money. His mom is a Seventh-day Adventist, and she just sells some herbs beside uh, the sidewalk. So he comes to us, and I explain to him, this is your diet. This is what you do. Since your kidney and liver is not working, you have to have the kidney and the skin do the work of the, the liver. And this is your diet. Your liver's main job is to digest food and to detoxify and to process food. So it costs really more carbohydrates, okay? But we want carbohydrates that are healthy and we want to not have to have it work so you have to blend or squeeze the, the food. And then you have to get rid of the fluid by sweating. So he bought a plastic and applied it and he would make his own charcoal and applied it. Well, to make the long story short, he was healed. The tummy started shrinking. You go in the sun, I said, Better you get burned by the sun and they become black or dark than get yellow. <laughs> he was successful. He healed his liver cirrhosis. The gastroenterologist could not believe that it was still reversible. But the body can surprise you. The liver is the only organ we chop up one third, will regenerate back to normal within two to three months. So the ability is there, but he's damaged it with alcohol and cigarette and so on. Of course, I told him you ask God for a second chance. He had his second chance and got rebaptized and went back to church. The body is capable of doing wonderful things. You just have to help him. So I take an example, no? Well, some people would use uh, pseudocellophene or plastic, charcoal, herbs, or fruits, or seaweeds, or clay or mud. Mahal ba yung clay or mud? Is it expensive? Okay. So, see, you can treat a person using stone. Is it expensive? No. Clay, is it expensive? No. Charcoal, well, you can make your own charcoal. Huh? The, the cell pain probably will be a little bit expensive, but you can reuse that. Huh? Reusable chat. So this is how we do it. So use a simple plastic. Sometimes we have a bed that has an infrared uh, setting so that it will make you sweat more. But even if you don't have the special high-tech bed, you can do it at home. Yeah, this is charcoal. This is a charcoal mixture. We mix it with uh, starch, corn starch, and a little bit of hot or warm water so that it becomes like a paste. Then after you mix that, and a person lies on their, their back or their stomach, and then you apply it. Uh, gently and we really give it a little bit of heart so that it's like you're having a massage at the same time then you wrap and the person just lay there for maybe 30 minutes 
for liver cirrhosis and for kidney patients, it depends on our high, how high the creatinine is. If the creatinine is less than 300, 400, maybe just 30 minutes is enough. If the creatinine is 800 and above, then you do a wrap for four hours. You can do it straight four hours or maybe two hours in the morning, two hours in the evening. Dr. John Harvey Kellogg used to do the same thing for liver and kidney patients in Battle Creek, Michigan. And what he was using was mud packs instead of charcoal. And he was very, getting very good results with it. So it's not in you. Except we use charcoal now. So charcoal is charred wood and it can absorb. The word we would use is adsorb. When you say absorb, it's like a sponge you put in water and it soaks up water. Absorb. When you say absorb, it's like a magnet that you put in the ground and all the rocks and tiny pebbles stick to it. So it's, it's only on the outside. So the charcoal binds these things around it. And uh, it can absorb gases, drugs, toxic chemicals, infectious bacteria, and viruses. Yeah. And venom. During the Gulf War, uh, the American Army uh, were so afraid of bacteriological and gas warfare. They thought Saddam Hussein has all these toxic uh, and uh, uh, you know, poisons that they're going to use on him, on, on the U.S. And so when they came in, their uniform were charcoal impregnated. Of course, now we have charcoal impregnated socks and underwears. And, but during that time, it was their uniform. So that if they got hit by bacteriological or toxic warfare, it will be spit out by their uniforms. Okay. Then there's gas mask. You open it, that's activated charcoal. Diatops and polymama, before you open it, it's black. That's activated charcoal. Tremacine, which is being used now by nephrologists from Japan, is just activated charcoal. They put it in the food. So when they eat, they put it in the food. Then the charcoal absorbs the, whatever things there in the food, the creatine goes down. So that's for kidney failure. But we were given that knowledge a hundred years ago, and in wise time. We have a book on charcoal, and then some of our doctors were hitting it and saying, oh no, there are therapeutic claims, they should not be done, so and so and so. And now, medicine is using Tremacine and activate charcoal for poisoning. So, you know, there's something wrong with the, the, the mindset. So, this is an example of a charcoal pack or, or wrap. And it's just the name, no? Oh, you can use it for beauty treatments also. Benefits. It's used for abscesses, bee stings, boils, bruises, bug bites, burns, ear aches. You don't put it inside, no? externally. <laughs> Uh, eye inflammation, you don't put it right there on the eyes, you, you put it outside. Although, there was a recorded instance of one old guy, he's about 80, I was doing a lecture on charcoal in Palawan and he told me a story. He said he had a heart attack. His eyes were open and they had to rush him to Palawan Adventist Hospital. On the way, the chief carrying him had cracks on top and there were several sacks of charcoal on top. The powdered charcoal were falling on his eyes, open eyes. When he Gain consciousness, they had to wash his eyes because it's so full of charcoal. His eyes were swollen, no? So they had to wash every day for three days. Wash, wash, wash. After three days, he had perfect eyesight. <laughs> he said, I never had to wear antipara or eyeglass ever again. I didn't have the heart to try it. <laughs> but it's fascinating. Another story in Palawan, they heard about our lecture and that child was having loose bowel movement and it was so severe and the nearest hospital is eight hours away from Puerto Princesa to Batarasa is about that long. So they have no choice. They heard it on the radio. I think we did a lecture on it. So they looked for charcoal. They saw at the, the uh, cook, uh, you know, they, they, they cook things in, uh, in, in uh, wood. So they have these the ashes and so on. They saw all these black things there. Oh, that's charcoal. That's... So they took charcoal and ashes put it in water and have a child take it. was effective. But the following morning, it was night, and there were a poo, poo of the cat there, <laughs> the black thing. But it worked, no? He ate charcoal and poo, poo and there was no problem. <laughs> okay, so you know, okay. So just to give you how effective uh, charcoal. So you can make it into solution. No? So the baby who's having loose bubble, they can uh, put it in their uh, bottle feeding, no? The capsule, 
the fever bath, this is a tub where you increase the body temperature to 38, 39 degrees. Then you put charcoal to absorb toxins. Then as enema or lavativa. No? So you can use it. We've, we've had success for prostate cancer, prostate problem, vaginitis, uh, uh, female problems. Uh, we, we flush it there. Cervical cancer, uh, uterine cancer, very effective. One patient we had, uh, uh, Elderly uh, lady, well, actually, uh, matandang dalaga, you know, you know, and she was a very, very hard case because she was really an obnoxious person, <laughs> and she's an Adventist. Probably that's why she ended up an old maid. Anyway, she worked for the United Nations World uh, Organization in Switzerland, and she developed breast cancer. So they did chemotherapy, and after three years, it became Hodgkin's lymphoma. So they did chemotherapy, and after a year and a half. It, became, it, it came back. Then after I, uh, uh, they did chemotherapy, so about four times they did a complete course of chemotherapy. The last time, it was a six month interval. And this time, it was all over her body. Fevers, bones, scalp. So she came to us uh, uh, summer, somebody brought her to us from Manila Center. And she said, oh, doc, doctor, all my cancer are here, you can see it, you know. So I said, what, are we, what do you want to do? Oh, just leave everything to the Lord. Uh, I said, then I can't do anything for you. You have to be here. We're going to have to work hard. No, no, I'll leave everything to the Lord. So he, she went back to Switzerland. By September, she called, Doctor, you know, you remember the patient from Switzerland? Yeah, that's me. So what are you planning to do? Well, the you says I should do radiation. I go to the radiation specialist. They tell me, where am I going to irradiate you? No, she's got everything here, 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 here. So the radiologist told him, told her, go home. Go home to die. I said, so I told her, uh, what, what are your plans? Can I still come back? Well, but there's like there, so let's try it. So she comes. So the, first, the next three days, we started applying charcoal on her neck. Now, during that time, we just applied charcoal directly. We were supposed to mix it with psyllium, but we don't know where to get psyllium. Uh, now we have psyllium at the, the, yes. But then, they didn't have. So we applied it, and she would lie down in the hospital bed. And in the morning, you see all the charcoal <laughs> all over the place. And she was angry. For the next three days, she was saying, I didn't come from so far away, come here to have you experiment on me with charcoal. <laughs> but the fourth day, and nobody wants to do the charcoal anymore on her. She made all our therapists cry. You know? <laughs> so the fourth day, her mom comes from Manila, looks at her and says, you know, the charcoal, you know, the, the, the tumors are all shrinking. And she said, yeah. And she looked in the mirror, and they had. And so she said, now you're applying all over my body. No? <laughs> so we started doing that. But she was still obnoxious. No? After three weeks, Balitang Gay comes and wants to do an interview. I said, don't let her get interviewed. <laughs> but unfortunately, she was the one that they saw immediately. They interviewed her and said, see, I used to have double chin with a tumor and now it's wrong. From the point of view of someone like her from Switzerland, it's all balloon. It's crazy doing that thing. But God uses simple things to get, well, God uses ordinary things to get extraordinary results. So and now medicine is saying, yeah, it can be used for, for, for other things. And that's just an herbal rock. So maybe they use avocado here, huh? or uh, what, malungai extract, or ampalaya, <laughs> or cabbage extract. So you just make it into a poultice and you apply it. Okay. So you can use anything, as long as it's not uh, irritating to the skin, okay? So you wrap it. So the seaweed wrap, they use it for beauty and skin rejuvenation. And you can go to Starbucks uh, and ask for their used coffee granules. And you can use it to scrub, they're just throwing it away, you know? Scrub it and then leave it on and stimulates the skin, yeah? Very nice, very nice. That's a coffee scrub. And this is clay or mud body wrap. So in uh, Pinatubo area, they're using that. No? They will get it from the uh, side of the volcano, the Lahar, and they'll scrub it. And mud packs are, well, the Bible has a story of one person doing a, a mud pack. Remember who? Huh? Jesus, right? Now Jesus, if you'll notice, can heal people even if he doesn't see them, right? One guy, guy comes, the centurion says, you know, my, my servant is uh, sick. Can you please come? He said, no, I, 
I will come. No, 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 you don't need to come to us. Just say the word and he's well. And he did, just like that. But along comes someone who's blind in his birth. And he comes to ask for healing. What did Jesus do? He spits poof. Then made a mud pack and applied it on his eyes. If you were the patient, he'd ask your friend, uh, what, what did he do? You don't want to know. <laughs> no, 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 I, I really want to know. What's that cold thing in my eyes? On my eyes. Oh, uh, he, 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 he made a mud pack. Oh, okay, with his spit. Oh, <laughs> and applied it, and he's there. Phew. And then Jesus tells him, you go to the pool of Shiloh, and you wash there. Lord, I'm blind. You're telling me to go to the pool of Shiloh. I'm going to have to get someone else to bring me there. Can you imagine that? Just imagine that. Could Christ have healed him some other way? He could. He can say it will happen. Why do you think he did that? That's called OJ's participation. <laughs> they have to do, he has to do his part. He has to have someone bring him to the pool of shallow, watch it, so he doesn't take it for granted. Do you understand? Look at uh, Naaman. Huh? He's the best friend of the king of Assyria. Assyria was more elite than Israel. They went to ask the river Jordan, probably saying, hey, look at all this ugly river here. They got hurt. <laughs> he gets to uh, Elijah and he's got all this, and he was feeling very, you know, VIP, and bringing all his uh, uh, pressures to kill and lay at his feet at Elijah. And what did Elijah do? The servant comes. Oh, are you Naaman? Go take a bath in the river seven times. Now, if you are a leper, you're very sensitive to smell. No? <laughs> Lepers rot. They're very sensitive in terms of hygiene. People are, they don't like them because they are lepers. No? They smell terrible. You go to Tala Leprosario and the joke is that beware of body parts. You know? They sneeze and their nose falls off. You know? <laughs> they are rotting. <laughs> you don't want to be near a leper. So he is his name, man. He's the best friend of the king. Then you treat him like you're smelly. You go take a bath. Huh? He took a bath. Well, he didn't want to take a bath. He said, let's go home. And his friend says, Lord, if he told you to maybe do a great thing, maybe kill a lion, climb the highest mountain, sweep the deepest sea, would you do it? I would. They just do that. So simple. He said, there are cleaner rivers out there. No, you just do what you're supposed to do. Do you notice that is an element of natural healing? Just do it. No? If you want to get well, you do it. You don't want it. Fine. So he takes a bath three, seven times. So simple to do a bath seven times. But some of the patients would rather die than change their diet. He you know? said, If I'm going to die, I might as well die happy. I have yet to see a cancer patient die happy or smiling. You know? I mean, except for the natural way. Natural pa patient, they're smiling. <laughs> they have no pain. Or someone who has a heart attack or, 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 or die of a uh, Heart, a lung disease, you know, they, they could hardly breathe. They don't look like they're happy. You know? They were in pain. So we have to teach them such thim simple things. So this is clay. Uh, it's been used for thousands of years. And they are very good in relieving pain of arthritis. See, when you apply charcoal on, a, uh, on an arthritic joint, it's not going to be that effective because you've got swelling in there. Yeah, they can get swelled down. But it seems clay is more effective. Although if it doesn't work, then we have other types of poultices like uh, eggplant. You get eggplant, you, you, you turn it into a paste, apply it on the swollen area, especially for uric acid patients, and with a plastic, just keep it there. And it absorbs the swelling because of alkaloids in the eggplant. You know, so it's fascinating. Anyway, the clay has a two effects. It not only pulls toxins out, but it also gives minerals in. No? When they check the clay, it has the exact mineral consistency of the human body. Why do you think that is? We came from clay. No? So look, it can eliminate food allergies, food poisoning, colitis, plastic, and parasites. How? You take it by mouth. You drink it by mouth. So they are, again, it's, are clay, uh, it's clay expensive. 
Hindi, di ba? But you have to sterilize it. You know? Heat it up until it's, it's hard because then all the bacteria have been destroyed. Then you can use that. Pulverize it and take it orally. Don't take my word for it. Check the internet. <laughs> so look at its external application. Traumatic injury, tendonitis, carpal tunnel syndrome, acne, eczema, bruise, burns, gallstones. Fascinating, di ba? Mercury poisoning, no? liver detox, food poisoning, so you can use it externally. Then we do salt blow just to uh, uh, make the skin work better. Sometimes, sometimes we have patients that have not sweated out for years, especially for those with the dialysis, doing dialysis. Because they are required to drink only a small amount of water, and then they have to do dialysis. So their skin, uh, they, they look like prunes, no? dark, wrinkled. And so the sweat glands have resigned. <laughs> so you have to awaken them with the salt scrub. And you have to uh, exfoliate. So you use that as a finishing touch for patients who have done a wrap. Okay, then you do skin brushing. Of course, hydrotherapy, we have been exposed to lectures about hydrotherapy for some time, no? So suffice it to say that the eliminating power of hydrotherapy, uh, detoxification, loosening of tight muscles, so you do massage and his muscles are hard, uh, after the massage he'll be sore because you're trying to, to soften that muscle but it's not ready. Heat, heat and hydrotherapy, steam, sauna, uh, soaking in hot water or a hot bath relaxes the muscles so that you're able to massage and work on it better. And then enema. So uh, it helps eliminate toxins. There is such a thing as uh, a charcoal enema and this can be used for intestinal problems. No? You mga prostate problems the, because if you put your hand in there, the prostate is just in front. If you have enlarged prostate, charcoal helps absorb toxins and the prostate starts shrinking back to what it should be. So we've used it for uh, so many other uh, problems. Then coffee enema is basically used to make the liver clean toxins. Uh, George Hamilton was asked by, uh, who's that? Mel Gibson, what the secret of his uh, young looking skin is. And he said, brewed coffee. Oh, really? What do you do with it? He said, I do enema. Huh? The coffee enema is used by movie stars in order to retain beauty and health. What does it do? It stimulates the liver to clean toxins. And if you have a clean liver, then you have a clean blood. And clean blood is very good for longevity and youth. Okay. So how do you prepare this? Or what are the benefits? It, it stimulates the production of bile. It stimulates the liver and control pain. So before, when they have cancer patients with severe pain, they do enema, coffee enema, every two hours until the pain is relieved. Okay. And colonics are already high-tech things. You, you, you may not need to know it. Steam bath, 15 to 20 minutes, you, you sweat out, you eliminate quite a lot of toxins. Then fever therapy is a special technique we do for cancer patients or to lose weight. So we would put the patient on top, increase the temperature to 38, 39 degrees until they are really sweating hard. And cancer shrinks at high body temperature. So the Medical Association in the United States allow what we call something called hyperthermia. So when they treat cancer, they treat it with surgery, chemotherapy, radiation. But according to Reader's Digest, they also have a technique called hyperthermia. Hyperthermia means induced fever. So if I would give it a choice between surgery, chemotherapy, radiation, fever, what would you choose? Fever. Reversible, eh? No? But they use fever only after that they've done chemotherapy. What does fever do? It boosts your immune system. Make sure white blood cells act faster. Red alert. Enzymes become more active at high temperature. And cancer cells are immature, retarded cells. They grow fast, they spread, but they are actually unable to withstand high body temperature. So if you can increase your body temperature to 38, 39, 40, tumors that don't like that. They don't, they don't, they don't like it. They do not like it. Okay, it initiates immune system to begin working. It's effective in treating conditions such as cancer, skin infections, allergies, and autoimmune disease. Lupus, fibromyalgia, uh, multiple sclerosis, these are uh, 
they don't know the cause of these diseases, and there's no known cure. So they just give steroids, you know? The immune system is crazy, it attacks what it's not supposed to attack. When you put them on fever therapy, you're slapping the immune system to go back to normal. So, instead of depressing the immune system when we use it for disease like this, we try to rehabilitate the immune system. Instead of destroying it with steroids and chemotherapy, we try to make the immune system stronger and healthier so that it will do a better job. So that's how we treat uh, autoimmune disease. Then electrotherapy, uh, acupuncture is uh, scientifically valid. Massage, huh? and what are the benefits of massage? It relieves stress, it encourages relaxation because most of the time stress is one of the things that causes problems. When you're stressed out, especially for brain workers, the muscles in the back, upper back, bunches up. So less circulation to the brain. So you get headache, you get all these problems. No? You make wrong decisions, you, you flare up easily. You have to learn to relax that. But we have forgotten how to relax. No? So someone has to do the relaxation for us. So massage does that. Improves circulation, improves posture, lowers blood pressure. Okay? Helps manage pain, relaxes muscles, improves flexibility, and so on, and so on. As tone massage, again, this is, you can apply it on certain points, or you can put oil and move that hot stone up and down. Can you imagine someone massaging you with something warm or hot? Sarap, you know? You have to feel it to believe it. Yeah. If the massage is good, imagine. Well, actually, in other countries, a friend of mine told me they would boil oil. You know? uh, well, the, it has a low heat. Uh, it, it's not that hot. They put their hand on the boiling oil and massage that oil on you. Imagine the, not the pain, no? imagine the pleasure. Uh, but the hot stone is, uh, they, call, what they call that. This, they, they use the super, super hot oil and start massaging your back. So benefits, promotes deep muscle and tissue relaxation, alleviate stress, reduce toxins, relieves pain, calms the mind. Then bentosa. Have you heard of bentosa? Okay. You can use it actually to draw poison from out if you've been had a stink bite or some or some infections. But uh, there are certain points that you are supposed to apply it. There are nerve points that you're supposed to apply it. Uh, it can leave a mark. Huh? And there are two types of cupping. There's the dry cupping, where you just put it there, or the wet cupping, wherein you put oil. The wet cupping also, you can make an incision to pull uh, blood out, but then that's too painful. So, so they use that for high blood pressure. You draw a little bit of blood, and there is a reaction of vasodilation so that the blood pressure goes down. And on purpose, to remove stagnation and drain fluid, relieve inflammation, nervous system sedation. If you cannot sleep, and you have to take your pills, I'd rather do this. So you relax, you sleep, right? And take a drug that changes the way your brain thinks. Right? Stretches muscles and connective tissues, losing adhesions, pulls blood supply to the skin. And you can do your own cupping, right? You can, uh, you can just use a simple glass, or some of them even use a bamboo that they cut with a close end. So it's such a simple procedure that even our great great grandparents were using it thousands of years ago. Well, to make the long story short, if you overhaul your car, it's going to function better. Right? The engines will function better because you clean up so that the engine will function and burn better, the oil, the, the gas. Same thing with the body. The body is a wonderful machine that God gave us. We plug it up with so many things, but we are actually taking better care of our car than our body. So when you move your meal before six, that's already cleaning it up. Maybe once a week you do a fruit diet, or a juice fasting, or a water fast if you're overweight. Or maybe at night you just change your meal. Maybe just take fruits, that's already a cleansing diet. Or if you're overweight, maybe just juice in the evening, or soup. So something very light. The elephant is maybe like a little bit of crackers. Right? So, but at least you're not giving your system hard work at night. Because that's the time you repair, that's the time you regenerate, that's the time you rest. And when you have a clean body, it will work best. You will have health, beauty, and longevity. So you treat your body right, it will treat you right. And then finally, cleansing of the mind. Okay? 
Whatsoever things are true, honest, just, pure, lovely, are of good report. If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on this thing. If your mind is not healthy, your body will also follow. But if you think on positive things, no? there will always be something positive in any situation. So you, you, if you cannot find anything, just change your, the way you think. Change your attitude. So again, the prayer is, Beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper in health, even as your soul prospers. That is God's wish for us. It should be our wish for others. The Lord will use us as mighty instruments. You'll be able to do greater things than what I've done, the Lord says. Huh? Can you imagine us doing greater things than what Christ has done? But it, that it was given as a promise. So a person that a doctor cannot treat or cure comes to you. You give him some diet or you do cleansing diet, some herbs, charcoal, and he gets well. And the grass out there, the plants that you are just stepping on, the dog is poop, making poo poo or the cat is making wee wee, no? Then you take it and chop it and boil it. You have to wash it first because of the poo poo, no? <laughs> then drink, give it to drink, and you got well. To whom is the glory? God. So we place you in this earth to make a difference in people's lives. I believe that if you listen and you study and you learn these things, God will add more knowledge. Because we, that's certainly our job, right? Going to all the world, preach the gospel, lead the sick. It's our job. He will give us the ability to do it. View the whole Start A New Program starting with the opening interview with Dr. Samuel Thiessen, Parts 1 and 2, and the closing interview. There are lectures on What is Natural Healing on Christianity? Parts 1 and 2 God's Marvelous Self-Healing Body Cancer It Can Be Prevented Parts 1 and 2 Alternative Program for Kidney Disease Diabetes Wise and House of Detox Learn about modalities used for healing such as Body Massage Hot Stone Massage Ventaza Charcoal Pack Charcoal Wrap Anima and Facial Clay Treatment a video demo on how to prepare concoctions is also available. Watch the question and answer section recorded before a live audience. And enjoy the bonus sections on medical missionary work also recorded before a live audience. Thank you and may God keep you in good health.